Then start talking when you're on record. Yeah, go. <clears throat> now, this is a very special time of the evening in the Murphy household. Over here we have Minor Murphy. And that's Minor Murphy's mammy. That's Tiny Murphy. That's Missy Murphy is there. And that's Jackson Murphy there. And they're all lined up because every week I buy seven puddings. And they're treaties every night that I divide a pudding between the four of them. There's Minor. There's Tiny. There's Missy Murphy. And there's Jackson Murphy. Now sit down, Joe, sit down, yeah. There's Minor Murphy. There's Tiny Murphy. There's Missy Murphy. And there's Jackson Murphy. Now Minor Murphy there is 10 years old. Tiny Murphy, Minor Murphy's mommy, is 16 years old. Missy Murphy, she's seven or eight months old. And Jockster must be two and a half now, and they're waiting for their pudding, so I better stay going for a minute anyway. Missy Mur Minor Murphy, Tiny Murphy, Missy Murphy, come on now, Jockster, Jockster Murphy, sit down, you know. Now, again, Minor Murphy, Tiny Murphy, Missy Murphy, and Jockster Murphy, sit down now, there, sit down. Now, in relation to dogs, training dogs, and having them to do what you need them to do in a, without being aggressive with them, only at times when you need to check them. This is the way they should be. And none of each of these will take the others, where most dogs will fight. Like, will fight at the food bowls, will fight at anything that you give them, like in relation to food, and none of those four dogs know what a table is. Especially he doesn't. Because any dog of his size or any big dog that has ever given anything off a plate, anything from the table, will always be in the fashion then of reaching up and getting up on tables, getting up on counters and such like, which is totally out of order. Now, there's Minor Murphy, there's Tiny Murphy, there's Missy Murphy, come on now Joxer, and again there's Joxer Murphy. Sit down you, you're too big to be standing up. There's Minor Murphy, there's Tiny Murphy, there's Missy Murphy, come on now Joxer, and there's Tiny Murphy. Now what I do is, these three of course are only a quarter the size of what Joxer is. So, I cut Joxer's seven pieces three times bigger than what I cut their seven pieces and then it equals out that they all get the same. Now, Minor Murphy, Tiny Murphy, oh Jesus, Tiny got that now, Tiny now got that one and Joxer is not left, no because Joxer is there sitting waiting for his turn and I dropped one on the floor which was my fault and nobody else's fault and poor Joxer is left but you go get a biscuit for me now, missus. Yeah, bonus biscuit. A bonus biscuit now for Jackson. So I have to try and do that. Bring the four biscuits. And I'll give them all a biscuit as well. Now Zoe generally is the one. Sit down, Jackson. See, Missy Murphy, back, see. Sit down, you. Stay there. Now, Zoe is the one that gives out the bonus biscuits every night after they're feeding. Now, and it goes something like this. There's Minor Murphy's Biscuit. Now she'll go away now and eat that. They don't line up once they get that, they know it's the end of the pudding mousse. There's Tiny Murphy. Now Tiny Murphy has lost a lot of her teeth because she is so old. Well, they got them taken out. There's Missy Murphy. And she will have hers. And last but not least, is the big man himself, is Joxler Murphy. And that's how dogs should be. Now in rearing dogs and in training dogs, it's no different than with a child. People use a lot of different language, a lot of different words, a lot of different commands, which in reality can often confuse, confuse the dog. The main thing that animals, dogs, need to understand is, and are the words, no, back, 
and see it. No, you're not to do that. Come back, back and see. And then there is a word that we use when we want them to go outside before they get their pudding and we call it woosin. Now, they understand that word as well as I understand the word water or television or anything else. And every dog in the period of their lifetime, like they will command the same in language and skills and in understanding, if done right, as a four or five year old child, believe it or not. Now people might not understand that. But everything is like that the dogs are never afraid of me or Zoe other than if they do something wrong. Like I had a bitch here, she was, oh God, she was a topper. Minnie Murphy was her name. Now, Minnie was so clever, like I used to call, I, I used to call her a Minnie Einstein. Because by the time she was 12 months old, she was actually able to open the fridge. And that was big trouble. Not big trouble for me, but big trouble for her. And when in checking a dog, or if you have to chastise a dog in some way, it's no use doing it after, after whatever they're after doing wrong. Like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It has to be on the spot. When you let them do it and you catch them doing it, like opening the fridge, getting up on a table, anything like that, it's then the couple of small slaps on the arse and simply the word no. And they understand that, like, you know. And I've had dogs all my life, the same as my father before me, and my grandfather, and it goes back for generations. But it was mostly hunting dogs, and when I was a chap, of course, it was always terriers and ferrets and purse nets. And that's how I grew up, down the bank of the river, fishing for eels from the time I was a chap. And I was with the terriers with me, or with the dogs, or with the hunting dogs with me. Animals are not any different as far as I am concerned than people. They are a being. The same as I'm a being, a human being. They are a dog being and should always be respected with the same courtesy that one would expect to be treated themselves, and which is very important. But as with any child, there are boundaries. And when I let these dogs out, they go out on the green on their own. I sit outside the door, or Zoe sits outside the door, and there's a big, large green. And they do not go off of that green. Because from the time they are pups, I walk them as what I call their boundary. And they know what their boundary. Well now, Tiny Murphy now, in fairness, she's the mammy of all mammies. Like with her age and that, Tiny has many houses that she calls to on the estate here every day where she gets a slice of ham or some such sort like and that's why like she's as fat as a little pig but then like at 15 or 16 years of age you don't mind that you never ever give a dog raw meat something I never do and it's very important also in relation to the difference in a working dog and a non-working dog a working dog needs a high protein diet. A non working dog does not need a high protein diet. And many people make that mistake and then wonder why their dogs are wired to the moon, for want of a better way of putting it. And it is a lot to do with people feed dogs with canned food and such likes. Where with canned food and such likes, what can happen is it can cause. It, it, it brings a mite out and out through, out through their skin from their blood 
like and causes a terrible itch with the dog. And there's many things to know about the dog, to know about your animal. And to know if your dog is, especially if your dog is anemic, what you do is you look at the colour of your own gums. Then you rise up the dog's lip and you look at the dog's gums. Now if the dog's gums are pinkish colour, that means the dog is not anemic. But if the dog's gums are gone a whitish colour, that means the dog is anemic. Another thing to understand about dogs is, like if they're, high, if they're dehydrated, if there's a very simple test if they're dehydrated. All one does is, you bring over the dog, come over here Missy, and this is what you do. You just put the dog sitting down, and you pull up the skin on the back of the dog's neck, and it should go back like that. It should be like an elastic. That's the way it's supposed to be. And that means that your dog is not dehydrated. Now, there's also the sign of when warming a dog, or when a, do a dog needs warming. Like, and if you have one, two, three, four, or ten dogs, if you warm one, you, wor you warm all your dogs. Like, and I find the best way of warming is the tablet warm, more so than this thing that they put on their back, the back of their neck. And how you will know that the dog needs warming, the dog will show you themselves. Because what happens is, it's as if that their bottoms are itchy. In other words, their asses are itchy. And they start dragging their bums along the ground. And that is a sure sign that the dog needs to be the dogs need to be warmed, or all your dogs need to be warmed. Now, I didn't mean to sit here and to talk or to preach, or certainly to pontificate in any way, but I love my dogs and all animals the same as I love children. And people, uh, Down syndrome children and handicapped people and disabled people and all the like of that, and people in mental hospitals and such like. Because like, I communicate far better with animals than I do with a lot of people, like, and I'm very comfortable. Like, and they are comfortable with me. Come here, boy. Come here, boy. This big man now, when I got him, he was just, he wasn't as big as his head is now. And he has turned out, and here's another thing I do. I'm going to show you now. You just tip your finger. But you have to train your dog to do this. And massage the inside of the rear. Come back now, sit where it gets very waxy and that gives them great relief. Now you'll see the reaction now in a minute when I finished. When I finished with this here. Now when I'm finished you will see the reaction like you see like I'm just massaging the inside of his ear as I do with all my dogs because imagine yourself what it's like if you have an itchy ear. Now watch what happens now when I just finish his ears and watch his reaction. Good boy. Now, now you see that. That is like he is relieved. His ears are not itchy no more than I. My ears when I need to scratch them. And that's the end of the first video that I ever made. Thank you.